Welcome back to football season, everybody. And it's about time. Longview Lobos wound up 2008 in the state championship game. They start 2009 number one on the 4A charts. All they need now uh, is somebody to beat on to start the season. It's been 251 days since the Longview Lobos last took the field. They are ready to get started. Everybody's been anxious to play. You know what I'm saying? We don't know what's going to happen this year, so we just want to see what's going to happen. We finally get to hit somebody else that's not our own team. Oh, uh, you know, our kids are, are glad to finally be hitting someone beside themselves, uh, you know, through spring ball and in the first two weeks of practice. You know, it kind of got old to them, but last week was good taste. Been able to go against JT and, of course, this week with, uh, with Allen coming to town. Number one ranked Longview has high expectations and big challenges. The Allen Eagles beat them last year in the season opener on their way to a 5A state championship. Really, it's just an opportunity. You know, I mean, you get a chance to play a team that's, you know, supposed to be better than us. And, I mean, their 5A returning state championship is a chance to send a message to the rest of the state. You know, mainly just a good opportunity to play a good team. It gives a good gauging point, you know. I mean, you're playing a team that everybody knows is good. And, Gives you a good tell you where you're at. Well, we definitely know where we're at as a football team, and and may know that by halftime. With Longview set on a state championship, Coach John King said they need to play the best, and they need to take their lumps early. It's very important, you know. You go out there and you play in some patty cake, and uh, they may not can exploit any weaknesses that you have. But you play in the people we got to play with Allen and Tyler Lee and Lufkin. I mean, all three teams are going to give us different looks. You know, from uh, offensively, uh, from an offensive standpoint, from a defensive standpoint. So we, you know, we'll pretty much know uh, how we stack up time we get through this non-district race. The Lobos want to start this season with a statement game because they know a preseason number one ranking means nothing if you're not still playing at Christmas time. It will show people that uh, the number one ranking is not a fluke. They really do deserve that number one ranking, and that we can maintain the number one hopefully the whole year just to show people that we still here and we can play. All right, stage is set. we got two of the top teams in Texas squaring off tonight. A week zero throwdown. Last year, Allen won on their way to the 5A title. Longview wanting to start their season the same way. Allen's defending champs, and they look like it in the first half. Quarterback Matt Brown keep it, keeps it himself, or keeps it. You know, I like to say keep it sometimes. He gets the touchdown there. Then Longview tries a little trickery, but I call shenanigans. Fumble there, recovered by Allen. They would go on to score. Allen up 17-0 at halftime. But we got a different Longview team. Kerry Fortson, the star of the Game of the Week package. Look at the wheels on him. Runs it in for a touchdown. Lobo's now down 10. How about DeCedric Hunt? How about DeCedric Hunt punching his way into the end zone? Before you know it, Longview is up 21-17. Then Tyler McRae, Tyler, there he goes. Tyler McRae, touchdown. Longview, big lead. Then on the kickoff, Allen. That's not the way you draw that up, really. Longview recovers. They go on to win 28-25. to Longview knocks off the state champs to start the season. Thanks, Reed. It looks like we'll be following the Lobos well into the holidays. Well, tonight was much more than a football game for the Tatum Eagles. It was a time of healing for the entire town. Tatum's Booster Club president and school board trustee Karen McElwain was seriously injured last weekend in a wreck that also killed her husband, Bill. The couple's twin sons, Devin and Kevin, are seniors on the football team. So a lot to play for in Tatum tonight. And Eagles, the second play from scrimmage... Running back B.J. Allen gets the call, and are you kidding me? He is gone. Turns on the Jets. This just gives you goosebumps. 80 yards later, Tatum is on the board, 6 to nothing. What a start, and everyone in Tatum just excited even more so this week. Now, Bobcats, they come back. Quarterback Bo Markap is sacked by linebacker Terrence Johnson. Hallsville would then miss a field goal, so it's still 6 nothing. Now it's quarterback Jared Simpson. Play action going long to Anthony Maxey. 40 yards. He's down at the three. And two plays later, running back Deatrick Taylor knocks it in from three yards out. Hallsville led it 7-6 at that point. And it looks like the final score in this one, 14-6. Tatum goes down to Hallsville. 
Another 3A versus 4A showdown in Gladewater as Spring Hill took on Lindale. The Lindale Eagles making their entrance, but Spring Hill, they're going strong. Spring Hill Panthers ball. Dylan Brown back to pass and connects with Tyler Zapata. That's just five yards out and then 40 yards for the score. 7 nothing. Still in the first, Matt Broussard to Keandre Ross. He squeezes through the line. Is he going to make it? No. Down to the... 20 for a 45-yard run. A couple plays later, Broussard connects with James Cruz. This is my crew. 27-7 score and near the end of the first. Panthers Dylan Brown connects with Terrence Johnson. This for 45 yards. Nice catch and stays in bounds. 14-7 at the half. The final, Spring Hill gets a big win. What a game this was. 35-29. Here's a kickoff classic from last night. Dickie Meeks and the Henderson Lions taking on Navasota down in Lufkin. We start with the big hit. Cord Fletcher. Let's see that one again. Nice hit there. No, that's just the helmet, not the head. That was about it, though, for the Lions. Navasota, three plays later. Kai Hildreth breaks it out on the quarterback draw. 58 yards for the score. 7-0 Rattlers. Tough start for Henderson. They played without starting quarterback Terrell Jenkins. He was out with an injury. And the Lions lose this one 47 to nothing to start the season. On the scoreboard, Class 4A. And we don't have any Nacogdoches and Mount Pleasant played tonight. I know they did. Uh, I believe NAC won that one 15 to 14. Pleasant Grove beats Pine Tree tonight. And, uh, was, all right, let's get back out here, folks. We still got a lot more to come on our first red zone of the season. Yeah, we got a lot more scores that we will get to, and it would be a huge mistake to go anywhere. We have a ton of highlights to get to, including Gilmer's battle with Jasper. It's so big, they had to play at SFA. That's next on the Red Zone.